Hi, and welcome to the Total Film spoiler-filled Star Trek Into Darkness discussion. Uh, we will be talking about all the main themes from the film, uh, the big performances like Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, some of the fanboy references uh, and comparisons to previous movies, uh, whether it's better than the first one, and most importantly, what this means for Star Wars. We will not fit. We'll fit, we'll fit! I told you we fit. I am not sure that qualifies. <laughs> So, uh, first impressions in Star Trek Into Darkness, what did you think, Gav? I thought it was okay. Like, I liked it, I really liked I loved the original, I really liked this, but I don't know, it just felt like there was something missing. Like, I can see you already boiling over. Because <laughs> <laughs> you loved it, I sat next to you, and that was a fun thing sitting next to you, because it was like sitting like next to a child on Space Mountain. <laughs> you, you were like, you are like, whoa, this is... Yeah. Wearing a Trekkie outfit. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. No, I, do, I do tend to get involved with, with these yeah, things. Yeah, especially but, 3D. You're, yeah, you're yeah. an old man, so you thought it was like coming at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. But um, yeah, no, I, like, what was missing? I what was know. missing? Was what did you want? I just, oh, I'm sure we'll go into it. I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure we'll, go, we'll go into like in specifics and stuff like that, mm. but the first one, I wasn't expecting anything from. Right. And. You know, it was amazing. I loved it. Mm. Then this one, I, obviously, I you know, I really loved the original, so I was expecting really big things. But I don't know, it just never really hit for me. Like, right. and I thought it sort of just meandered a bit until you know the big reveal. Like, oh yes, he is actually Khan. It seemed like that's when it really started getting going, and then it never actually got going to the point that I wanted it to. Mm. So initial impressions were like lukewarm. Yeah, like I, I, I liked it. It's like it's, it's a strong, strong film. You can't yeah. let you know, but yeah. I mean. How did you it's feel very when you came strong out? Film. <laughs> when you literally walked out of the cinema, what did you think? Were you like buzzing or were you just kind of like, meh? Meh. Meh. Oh, okay. meh. Matt, what did you think? Um, I feel slightly differently to Gav in that I was sort of buzzing a lot of the way through it, but it kind of peaked a bit early and then so then I ended up leaving a bit kind of blah blah blah. I oh, think you oh. ended up leaving. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I, ended up, I ended up leaving at the end of the film feeling. <laughs> Like, oh, I'm a tiny bit disappointed, but mm. perhaps, disappointed. perhaps because of what had gone before was so good. You're not a maniac. So that isn't to say I didn't really enjoy it. But just not but, as good as you were hoping. Yeah, perhaps not as good as I was what hoping. From a film, like, for a hand to reach out of the screen and give you money. Yeah. <laughs> what did you think, right. Sam? <laughs> 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 just going to throw this out there. Did you enjoy it, buddy? Yeah, yeah. It, I thought it was incredible. Like, you know, it was, it was thrilling. Like, I was emotionally involved. Like the Kirk death scene, I, I cried like a child. Aww. Like it was so emotionally. You didn't engaging. think he was dead though. Huh? You didn't think he was really dead though, surely. Oh, here we How go. How could you <laughs> think the Pepper <laughs> Potts was dead? And Iron Man it wasn't dead in Iron Man 3. But you well, thought that they would kill off Captain Kirk. Because in uh, <laughs> Wrath of Khan, yeah. Spock actually died. Yeah. yeah. And it's not until the next one that they bring him back. Yeah. So I thought, right, okay. So did you find it a bit of an anticlimax at the end when he wakes up in the hospital bed and he's like, I, I would have done if it hadn't been for the fact that his life was technically saved by a triple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, that's, that I that think scene, that's incredible. That scene where uh, they go, where he find out about you know what Bones is doing with the blood was just like basically just whacking the audience across the mm -hmm. face. Hey, what you doing with that triple bone? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm injecting his blood into it to see if it comes back yeah. to life. Oh, are you right? Maybe that'll be important later on. Yeah. I found yeah, that yeah, pretty hokey. Yeah. It's, it's the same as Iron Man in regards to as soon as kind of you saw he was gonna die or whatever. You you could if you've seen enough films you can see the setup and you're like, mm -hmm. well, that's obviously gonna bring him back. And I was sat next to somebody in the cinema who when kind of the triple came back into it, he was like, oh, and I was like, really? yeah, I was like, how did you not see that coming? That was really... You, weird. Reacted, like, you reacted in quite a surprised way when, when the triple came back into it. And I thought, there's no way he's just worked out. No, 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 okay, yeah. I had just he's a clever out. man. I, I was just really happy that, okay. like, they, <laughs> the triple was back, and that, that was the thing. You're punching yeah, yeah, the triple. Like, yeah, triples are useless. So. Do you reckon that's yeah. going to be the next one? Just the whole thing? Yeah. Bugger Klingons, just Pure completely triples. triples. A kind of initial impressions then everyone enjoyed it but just wasn't you obviously loved it i think yeah. i was kind of i'm on the side of the thing that i enjoyed it and i thought it was ace and it was thrilling and the action was awesome the performances were great but it didn't really blow me away there was nothing in it that truly surprised me i suppose i like the whole kind of fanboy service of inverting what happened in the original star trek 2 
but um, I didn't think anything was like, oh my god, this is the best thing ever. Mm. We, we, oh, come on, what about when Leonard, Leonard Nimoy popped up on the Don't screen? Get that, on that, that to me that, was, oh. that's the point where yeah. I dipped. Yeah, for yeah, me. So like, same as in the first one, oddly. Like, it just kind of goes that. a bit downhill. When <laughs> I, like I, I, quite like, I quite enjoy the fact that the scene where he just goes, uh, yeah, we're sort of, what would this guy Khan? Like, does that mean anything to you? And he's like, <laughs> Oh Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> like, that was, that quite was awesome. But at the same time, it didn't really feel like he was actually. It felt feel like somebody was filming him on his iPhone or something like that. It was just like yeah. got it, like all that like Star Trek stuff, you know, all the, like the Enterprise stuff in front of his face. Mm. It was like it, oh, it didn't it, really feel like he yeah. was in there. It added nothing. It was distracting. I, lo I thought up until that point it was confident the way they had kind of like yeah we set up the alternate universes, but we're just going to get on with our own one now. Whereas, it was, oh, why did you Yeah, and it just felt like, like if you're going to do that, why, like, the whole, what didn't they kind of make a point in the first one of going, you can never contact me again because the space time <laughs> yeah. continuum will implode. And then the first time they need him, it's like, can't. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of an arsehole. Right, okay, fine. Oh, and then, and like, he doesn't learn anything from it. He already knew he was probably psychotic. It's not like he spoke to him and went, oh, now I know he's a bad guy. We're going to yeah. save the world. Like, he added nothing. It was just fanboy service and it didn't do anything for the plot. It was, yeah, just a I bit I like how they even, in that so scene, tr tried to address the idea, just in case anyone would go, well, you said in the first one that you would never tell us anything. And he's like, I know I said in the first one that I wouldn't say anything, but, but this dude is properly bad news. <laughs> anyway, gotta go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's brilliant. And, and it was one of the rare moments, I thought, in Into Darkness that didn't feel extremely confident because J.J. Abrams, he's all, like, that's one of his, he just kind of knows exactly what to do. He's, sort of, he's obviously so in control, and yeah. that just felt like... Uh, like about <laughs> nerves almost. It was but. very much making a point of if you haven't <laughs> seen Wrath of Khan, kind of making that point that this guy is super, super, super bad. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I don't mm -hmm. feel as though they necessarily needed that because Cumberbatch was, I thought, was incredible. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. I thought the performance really was awesome. I thought he was the best thing about it. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll come to performances in a minute. Um, I suppose the next question is kind of do you think this was better than the first Star Trek? Oh, 100%, Winnie. man. So Winnie. much better. So much better. The first one is rubbish. What? Yeah, this is why I think this is why I'm so different <laughs> to all of you, right? For me, the first one, like that opening sequence in the first Star Trek is amazing, mm. yeah. right? Can't argue with that. Even though Mark Wahlberg was meant to be. Yeah, you know, yeah, Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, totally. But yeah, um, and then for me, that film is just like <clears throat> downhill all the way. Like, I didn't like the Kirk and Spock relationship, I hated the big hands. How can you like a film with big hands? It's like the clumps or something. It was awful. When were um, the big hands? When, when, when um, Bones yeah. injects him with like, some oh, scene yeah. on the ship, isn't there? Something like that. He yeah. breaks with some virus, so it means that he has to get on the ship with him. Yeah. He's patient. Right, maybe awful's a bit strong. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> How you remember the big hands going? Yeah. Actually, yeah, oh, it was God. funny. No, no, no. <laughs> Um, I hated the big hands, and I, I, I hated the Kirk and Spock relationship, whereas in this one, mm. I feel that they really get that relationship right. It's the, perfect, yeah. yeah you good. know, the whole bromance thing yeah. is just, it's, it's lovely, man. Yeah. I, I, I am, awful is a bit strong. It was okay, the first <laughs> one. The first one was okay. But, so um, do you reckon was it was amazing. because the first one spent so long dealing with setup? Yeah, exactly. And I, it, it, Maybe it's because I am a bit of a Star Trek nerd um, that um, no, I found the first one so disappointing. Um, Do you not think though that, because what I loved about the first one, that I thought he did such a good job of balancing the old and the new and kind of really kind of paying lip service to fans and giving enough kind of little fanboy things, but then actually not making it so nerdy that newcomers wouldn't be alienated. Because I'm, I'm a mm. geek, but I've never really got on with Star Trek. Right. Whereas that first one kind of, that hooked me in. I was like, oh, yeah. okay, I could watch this. That first Star Trek, man, I don't know. I could feel JJ's lack of passion for it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah I really no, could. I didn't get that at all. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really could. I felt um, like there was a lot of love put into that film. That's why. Yeah, that's one of the reasons yeah. that I really, really liked it. Like, okay. it is enough of sort of fan service and enough of like brand new stuff that made me you know, care about Star Trek for the first time in a long while. Mm, yeah, it just didn't feel Trek enough for me. It felt more Star Wars, which I yeah, also yeah. love, but um, they're just completely different beasts. Yeah. So this one felt more Trekky, and that's why this you like it. This one totally felt more Trekky. It felt like you know, in the intervening years, he'd watched some episodes. Um, and that relationship, <laughs> that key Kirk and Spock relationship. He only watched The Trouble with Tribbles. That's yeah. the only episode he watched. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean, you know, obviously, like it, it's very actiony for Trek as well. But um, I really enjoyed the action. I found it really thrilling and moving, and cool. And I don't know why you guys. <laughs> why you guys hate me? Yeah. <laughs> what did you two think compared to the first one? Did you think it was better than the first Star Trek or the first rebooted Star not Trek? Even, not even close. I don't know. Just I was so excited by the first one coming out of it. But I think it's because expectations as well. I went yeah. in thinking, you know, with nothing invested in it really in the first one and then it completely like surprised me. Mm -hmm. Whereas with this one, I already had watched the first one recently, like again, I think twice in the last like six weeks I've watched it, like hung over. But and then gone into going into watch this, I thought, yeah, it's gonna be, you know, more of the same and it just I don't know, it's just a little bit messy for my liking, which we'll go into more sure in detail. Mm -hmm. Matt? Yeah, they're on a pretty even kill for me. I Overall, maybe I slightly prefer the first one, and the first one's got that opening scene, which is just one of the best opening mm. scenes for a long time. And so it's pretty much all been a bit downhill from there. But mm. uh, then I thought the action was really good in the second one, and yeah, I'd say about that even for me. I liked them both. I think kind of taking it back to like the fanboy lip service thing. Mm. Do you think that uh, were a from a Trekkie point of view, were there was there enough Trekkie stuff in there to make you happy? Do you think that it, it paid too slavish a homage to Wrath of Khan? Yeah, I think. Or do you reckon it was too focused on doing that rather than doing I think I, I came out of it thinking that it, 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 you have to go in knowing quite mm. a little bit about the Star Trek universe to get everything out of it, I think. Mm. Because otherwise, when Khan is revealed, if you don't know who Khan yeah, is, then that doesn't make any sense. Like, when and Khan was revealed, we were both like, that, yes. That was, that was my so, thought entirely as yeah. well. I was trying to picture, like, someone who has literally just because I mean yeah like the producer like Brian Burke he said sort of said before it came out that this sort of you don't even have to have seen the first Star Trek to have seen this one mm -hmm. and I think that's kind of nonsense really because yeah. him saying my name is Khan it's not going to mean anything to him absolutely I mean, nothing I, yeah. I haven't I'm not a Trekkie at all I've seen about three episodes of the original series and I have seen Wrath of Khan, that's actually the only Star Trek film I've seen. <laughs> so I kind of, obviously I, I knew a bit about Khan, but yeah. to anyone else, like if I picture yeah. just your average cinema guy going in and the reveal, it's going to be like, who, it, what? Yeah, no, it, it is interesting. I mean, when that was, when it was starting to become obvious that this mm. is the moment he's going to mm. say that he's Khan, mm. um, I was uh, sitting next to Ian Berriman from SFX and he actually grabbed my thigh <laughs> and we made eye contact and then went back, <laughs> back to the screen. But the problem was we were then so excited that it had happened um, that we kind of missed, there was quite a long exposition dump after yeah. that and I missed quite a lot of, um, of what he was saying about why he was doing what yeah. he was doing. For example, I still have no idea why he had all of his mates there, right? All of his, his frozen his, friends. His frozen yeah. mates. And he's like, well, where do I put these? Where do I put these? In missiles. <laughs> <laughs> that is literally yeah. the worst place to put your mates. Um, but anyway. It was to smuggle them out. Just, yeah, to yeah, smuggle yeah, them out. Yeah. Them and then and he got caught and then they, right, okay. But the fact yeah. is, like, from everything um, that we saw until Spock got involved, he's like the most powerful superhuman on the planet. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why don't you just beat the crap out of everyone in the first place yeah. and then run away with everyone? Yeah. Um, that was a thing. That was a thing with, and the thing is with Khan as well. The re, the reveal is awesome mm. if you know who Khan is. Yeah. Yeah. If it if yeah. it isn't, it's just confusing. You just think yeah. like, well, why are they calling? Was it John Harrison? Yeah. Yeah. Like, this, why this, are they even bother? Khan from the beginning. Yeah. 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 It, it, like, it's odd. A big, uh, also, sorry to interrupt, but the the, the fact that. JJ wanted to keep that a secret yeah. as like a reward for fans. It'd be interesting to see how this film does box office wise. Yeah. I actually personally think that was maybe a, a bad marketing move. Yeah. yeah. Because that that's I agree with that entirely because I think with the whole Khan thing, I understand obviously I, I'm all for a bit of secrecy and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Don't give away all the secrets. But if they have just either said Benedict Cumberbatch is Khan Everyone would have started getting excited about it. Non fans yeah. would have started getting interested in who's this kind of Khan character. Exactly, they would like, have done a bit of research. Geeks yeah, yeah. would have started thinking, wow, I can't see what he yeah. does with Khan. We would have got them talking at least. Yeah. Whereas because they made such a big deal of like, he's not play he's playing John Harrison, the yeah. terrorist. Yeah, why? It kind that, of like, that's so it strange. almost like, it kind of it took me out of the moment a bit, like not quite the same as you with the thigh rubbing and such. <laughs> and, um, it kind of made me like I sat there thinking, oh, like it made me stop and think for too long. Yeah. I guess like I remember yeah. thinking, oh, so they they have gone down that route. Oh, they are doing that. Oh, yeah. why didn't they tell us this all along? Like oh, thing is, how like, a non fans gonna feel? I can understand why why they kind of made a point of this is not him because as much as you have that point of view, you also have kind of 
hundreds of thousands of fans who absolutely love this franchise, love mm. Khan, mm. consider that the best Star Trek ever. Mm. The moment you go, he's playing that character, the expectation and the fear and the internet kind of people bitching about stuff yeah. going into it, yeah. I think the level, I think the anticipation would be even too much. That's why they were going. Oh, oh, then that happened it. anyway, yeah. though, I think. That just yeah. They knew, yeah. obviously, John Harrison was a, a cover for something. Yeah. So the blandest name in the world. <laughs> and if you think about it, in the same way as like, the Dark Knight introduced like, the Joker, mm. like they introduced the Joker like, Pretty much, early, you know, really early on in the marketing stuff, Super and then, and then, early. And then yeah, yeah. focused like on that all the years. time. So, yeah. even like you know, the Joker is one of the you know most highly regarded characters, and Jack Nicholson's performance is quite pretty high regarded as well. And then that just I don't know, it makes it a bit more fun for the filmmaker then to go, Do you know, what? we're actually going to smash this. And yeah. I actually thought he was a better Khan yeah. um, than the original guy because he just it just felt a lot more evil, and a lot more powerful. Like, it's a cartoon in Wrath of Khan. And it's really interesting in terms yeah. of comparing <laughs> yeah. how, like, Marvel with Iron Man 3, they mm. obviously yeah. had their big secret with yeah. the Mandarin, and just, I don't know, their whole approach just feels a lot more cooler and more exciting. Who? Yeah. Marvel? Yeah. Marvel. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, whereas this feels yeah. almost like they were... Strange. Mm. Yeah. And to me, that's like, you really would lose something if you went in knowing the big Mandarin secret. That, that's like yeah. you would yeah. lose yeah. something yeah. from Completely. watching the film totally. Yeah. Whereas you, to me, you just wouldn't lose anything knowing that Benedict yeah. Cumberbatch was playing Khan. Exactly. Know. It'd be interesting to see. I mean, maybe we're missing something. Maybe, like, you know, mm. there's a reason for the marketing stuff being like that. But I just don't see what the no. advantage was of yeah. keeping him a, a secret. I'm sure people in our YouTube comments will let us know what, <laughs> yeah. what those advantages are, but I, don't, I can't see it. I, I think know. kind of bringing that back, so with, with the performances and with Khan and with Cumberbatch, mm. I, I mean, I thought that was the strongest thing. I Definitely, thought he was yeah. brilliant in it. I think he's going to have Hollywood basically bending yeah. over now. It's, he was it's terrifying, ridiculous. like absolutely terrifying. In the and same way that he's not, Bane it doesn't look, terrifying. But like mm. Bane has the whole physical imposing yes. thing. Mm. Benedict Cumberbatch, bless him, is not like the sturdiest of fellows, yet I believe that he could beat the living crap out of yeah. anyone there. So he, he did look like he bulked up a bit, yeah, like the, yeah, the, yeah. the bit where Kirk was punching him over and over that again. Awesome. I thought he looked pretty sturdy there. Yeah. But yeah, no, his presence was just insane. Yeah. Like you just wanted him on screen, you know, all the his time. His voice, like, I don't know if they did something yeah. with his voice, but it sounded a lot deeper. He's got a pretty deep voice anyway, but it sounded it like really Picard. intimidating. Yeah, like, <laughs> really exactly like, like what do you think of the other performances? Did Cumberbatch just steal it, or do you think everyone else kind of brought something to it? You said you like the bromance. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I, I'd say that um, the other guys really brought it. What yeah, Zachary Quinto was awesome. I thought like yeah. always, like he like Chris Pine's always good in his career. Like a, yeah, like Knight and um, what's his name. Carl Urban as well as Bones. Yeah. Yeah. It's always just the best thing in the film. Yeah, like, he's so good. I, I, he's awesome. There wasn't that was actually one of the key strengths of the first one mm. for me. Bones was yeah. just amazing. Yeah, yeah. I do feel that maybe there wasn't enough of him in this. Yeah, one. there's but, quite a lot of uh, Simon Pegg in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lord, Scotty. Scotty. He had an actual character out. Yeah, yeah. this time. Yeah, oh, exactly. I wish they would just get rid of that stupid thing that hangs around with him. That little alien. <laughs> <laughs> it really annoys me. <laughs> He doesn't do, do anything. anything. <laughs> I know, but yeah, everybody loves him. He's like, get down off it. Like, so what? Just get rid of him. It yeah. annoys me. Comedy why, psychic. You yeah. can't have it. You can't hate comedy psychic that does nothing. Wow. Yeah, and he's he got a cool do. little cappy head. Yeah, yeah. yeah, although it is funny when he goes when he when he leaves. He goes, come on then. He yes. just <laughs> puts his clipboard in as well and walks out. That's quite fun. I'm yeah. actually like, I'm possibly in the minority on this, but I thought with In Darkness that it did a pretty good job of kind of obviously certain characters like Bones and who have like limited screen time mm -hmm. and obviously it's constantly the plot's being propelled forward and it's just pretty near constant action and I thought they did a, a pretty decent job of getting nice little moments in for everyone yeah, like exactly. Bones. Yeah, exactly. had a nice yeah. moment. And I, I thought that was one of the yeah, things that was, that was quite well yeah. judged. But I just, yeah, again, I, if I was always held down, I would be pissed off because she didn't do anything. And when she was doing, she was just moaning. But they had the nice relationship bit at the beginning, you know, as yeah. they were flying down onto the Klingon planet and mm. they were kind of having that little kind of argument. I thought that was pretty nice. Yeah, that was cool. I actually thought, that, yeah, I, I thought it know. worked quite well the way I, that they had, like, the kind of the bromance and the yeah. romance kind of, and how they kind of were both playing off against Spock and getting frustrated mm. with him. I actually thought it worked quite well with kind of limited screen time. And also, I thought, yeah, she still didn't have a huge amount to do. Yeah. But more so than she did in the first one because I mean she actually at least she got to go down onto the Klingon planet yeah. far off the gun. That was she pretty did, cool. She yeah, did yeah, get exactly. any, the Klingon bit was actually pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. 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 I think that was I yeah, possibly my favourite bit. But yeah, she didn't get any action. Now, isn't <laughs> 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 she, didn't, she didn't have any action scenes in the first yeah. film as far as I remember did she? No, what did you guys think of the Klingons? Uh, like as a sort of reimagining of the Klingons? 
I really liked I liked that scene uh, the whole thing I thought it was very action packed and fun yeah. and stuff it's another one of my little kind of issues with the film is in regards to kind of dangling plot threads it was just like we've started a war with the Klingons anyway and then yeah. just didn't really mention it again I know they're setting up a third one yeah, yeah, yeah. but it just felt a bit like a lot of set up and then Do you no know what off. I thought was going to happen? You know that little bit in London with um, Noel Clark. Mm. Do you know what I thought was going on? I thought Khan was turning people into Klingons. Because <laughs> that girl was like losing her hair a little bit. <laughs> she was a <laughs> That's what I thought. That he was turning people into Klingons. I don't know why. To be honest, that film had triples was... in it. That isn't that far-fetched. Well, exactly. Hey. When, when it didn't happen, when that Klingon sort of... Uh, <laughs> But infected people with Klingon blood, but didn't happen. It's a little bit disappointed. <laughs> what did you think of like the redesign? I because th- I know it was quite subtle, uh, but with the little mm, kind of um, yeah, what's the word? The piercings and stuff. That yeah. was quite cool. No, it was cool. Yeah. It looked terrifying. Yeah. 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 Again, I'm not a Trek fan, so I don't really know much about the Klingons from their previous incarnations. But mm. I thought they were pretty cool. Yeah. That little chase with a bird of prey is awesome. Yeah. Like, when they're chasing I mean, them around, so like that, cool. that was really, yeah. really good. That yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Anytime I say there. anything positive, now, you just let me go. No, you like that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, and what do you reckon this means for Star Wars? Because uh, I think a couple of people coming out of it. I mean, I personally made me more excited about Star Wars. Personally, yeah. I think the way it was directed, kind of the action in it, it. There were a lot of moments that felt Star Warsy, and I think Matt felt exactly the same, didn't you? Yeah. I mean, like, I, th- I found that when I rewatched uh, the 2009 film recently as well. It just makes you think, like, I can't wait to see JJ from Star Wars. So they're, Star Wars. They're so many, like, I mean, they're basically in the Millennium Falcon at one point yeah. in that chase. And, um, yeah, and he obviously they go to Hoth basically in the first film. Yeah. Mm. But, I mean, one thing I kind of hope is, I don't know, I don't, obviously we don't know what kind of characters they're going to focus on in Star Wars, but... I almost feel like I, I sometimes find J.J. Abrams a bit cold as a uh, filmmaker. Like he's really slick; he knows exactly what he's doing. But it's almost like he hits the beats too well, mm. and he knows what he's doing too well. And yeah. I kind of hope that maybe because of his passion for Star Wars, maybe that will kind of come through. Yeah, and there'll be more heart to it, maybe. But mm. that's what I find all, all his films, apart from maybe Super Eight, mm. because I kind of I, I thought he did a really good job with the young cast, but. Mm. To me, yeah, start both Star Treks and like Mission Impossible Three, mm. they kind of they're great and they're really entertaining. They they kind of hit every note you want, mm. but they, they feel like there's just something lacking. Like, mm. yeah. See, if I if I was you guys, <laughs> I'd be worried about Star Wars <laughs> because the way um, he trotted out Leonard Nimoy in this yeah. is, I'd mm. say, pretty much how you know Skywalker and Solo. And, I'm gonna get trotted out as well. Yeah. I thought Peter and well, I loved it. Peter Well as well. I thought he was awesome. Yeah, he, he was, was great. Great. Well, yeah. he was good at the beginning. I thought this is awesome when he was playing like the admiral. And he was like the good admiral. When but, he turned bad, it did sort of get a little bit cartoony. Oh yeah, yeah. But, especially uh, his, his relationship with his daughter was yeah. weird. That was a bit strange. <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how uh, JJ balances the sort of referentiality, mm. it, like his passion for Star Wars that he doesn't yeah. have for Star Trek. Because one, for me. <clears throat> One of the weirdest bits in Into Darkness is when Kirk dies and Spock bellows Khan. Khan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because, like... A couple of people laughed. Like, it it, it when makes did, did it. no sense. Yeah. I, I liked it, don't get me wrong. I was like, that's weird. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it makes no sense whatsoever. And it yeah. makes no sense to me as a Star Trek fan. I can't imagine what some one of his, you know all these new people mm. that he's brought into the cinema thought of that moment. It makes no sense. And it makes no sense for the character, because Kirk, in Wrath of Khan, you can totally see Kirk banging the, the chair and yeah. bellowing out Khan, because he's a passionate, tempestuous person. Yeah. Whereas Spock, all of, all of his feelings are like... But wasn't that his kind of character arc for the whole movie, though? Yeah. He's learning his, to embrace... It, it, yeah, I, I, I get that, mm. but there's a bit of a leap from learning to, you know, feel things more, to, this, for this no feels... reason, to no one shouting out, come on! Yeah, this is feeling Khan. a bit yeah. contradictory from your earlier, like, this is a <laughs> Trek film for Trek fans. He yeah. get, you it, know, it's he true, it it, that is a con- contradiction. But like I say, I did enjoy it, even though yeah. it was weird. Yeah. I mean, I, I personally, again, as a, as a non-Trek fan, I enjoyed that moment, but like I've spoken to Trek fans who say they just found it really distracting, like because it was just it such t- a kind of obvious call. It's such a huge thing in the Star Trek yeah. universe, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, it took me out 
completely. Yeah. And I think you could have had that moment without that, and you still would have had enough referentiality yeah, to the last one yeah, for fans yeah, to be able yeah. to go, oh, I see what they're doing. That's quite clever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and also, uh, another weird thing about that scene is that um, talking about establishing stuff and paying it off, in the volcano scene, Spock um, says, the needs of the many are well, mm. needs of the few. And I totally thought Kirk was going to say that to Spock because obviously Spock says that in Wrath of Khan yeah. in that moment and why did not do that? <laughs> <laughs> JJ, man. <laughs> Dude, come Talk on. Talk to me. Come on, JJ. <laughs> but in general, I think everybody, everyone, like I did enjoy it. There's, yeah. there's oh, yeah, no part yeah. of me that disliked it at all. I thought it was great. I just didn't, it didn't pay off the expectation I had. No, it's, I mean, it's a strong film, and like it's yeah. ridiculously polished. Like it is an amazing blockbuster. Yeah. Exactly. Like, yeah, but I think Matt hit on the head with like just let me feel a little time bit cold. Mm. And another thing, I think another problem for me about it was as well. What I kind of said about dipping earlier was that some of the action was so good in the build up. Like I love the volcano bit. I love the I love the Klingon yeah. stuff on Kronos, and um, I loved I loved even the bit where Kirk and John Harrison were kind of flying. In that was great. That was cool. Yeah, that was, that was just so cool. And right. then, and then, and this may have been because I was tainted because I saw a sneak preview which featured a, a large excerpt from the um, Spock Khan chase at the okay. end. But I wasn't expecting that to be the climactic action scene. Yeah. And so when that wrapped up and he was frozen and they, you know, Kurt woke up in bed yeah. and Spock's done the, the job, I, mm. that felt a bit like. I was expecting, I mean, Something then I kind of realised yeah. afterwards, oh yeah, it'd been on for quite a while, you know, <laughs> I should have known it was going to them, but I was expecting a bigger Yeah, so the, like, the climax doesn't actually have Captain Kirk in there, yeah. yeah. So do you think this makes you excited for Star Wars? Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I'm for Star Wars, I'm more excited for the next Star Trek film though, because we're in ends in Star Trek, mm. like when they say, okay, now we're going off on this massive journey, mm. now I was thinking, okay, this is awesome, because it, it felt, this the last Star Trek and this Star Trek felt like they were just hanging around Starfleet quite a lot. Mm. Yeah. They weren't actually going out, which is why I really liked the volcano bit, because they were like, oh, cool, they're mm. actually on a different planet doing yeah. some cool stuff. Mm -hmm. Whereas, and then as soon as that happens, like right now we're back at Starfleet, Starfleet's been attacked. So I wanted to be like ages away from Starfleet. I don't want any involvement from Starfleet. I want them just going on these crazy adventures. Um, so I was more excited when I came out of it thinking, oh, the next movie's Star Trek movie will be, bet will be awesome. But they they have set up the Klingon War for that one, so yeah. I think they're probably gonna, they are gonna pop back. <laughs> So everyone enjoyed it, pretty much. Yeah. Issues aside, nerdy, fanboy, loving I don't, stuff. I don't like the way this is going. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let us know what you think uh, by going on to totalfilm.com and leaving comments beneath this video. Uh, on YouTube, beneath the video here, uh, facebook.com forward slash totalfilm and twitter.com forward slash totalfilm. Go easy on me. <laughs>